Well, here we are back again on my four-wheel drive uh, workbench <coughs> and the tailgate for it. Anyway, um, learned a lot of lessons as I go along. I uh, ordered a Bluetooth microphone so I can hopefully uh, do this without uh, sounding too hokey. And um, I've laid out some stuff on a on a towel here so that you can maybe see it a little bit better because I checked out some of the videos I put up last week and um, I wasn't really happy with them. In any case, um, this is a device, I call it a Nifty Lift, N-I-F-T-E-L-I-F-T, -E and I've got a couple of websites and uh, one of them is um, Nifty, N-I-F-T-Y, dash lift, L-I-F-T dot com. And um, I'm trying to make it as user-friendly as possible. And uh, some people that make a, a man lift, uh, it's called a nifty lift. And um, it's a nice product. But um, I'm trying to work around the name as best I can. In any case, um, that's the story. So you may find me under nifty lift, N-I-F-T-E-L-I-F-T. -E or you may find me under the nifty lift and i t h e n i f t y l i f t um i don't own the dot com on that but um, in any case uh, um, hopefully you can get to me now one of the reasons i wanted to make this video today is because some of the lessons i'm learning is that one of the things is this line and i keep doing it i do dumb things like this. Um, this line uh, can be cut, and if you hook it onto a, a hook or something that isn't round, um, it'll lo and behold uh, cut the cord, or it'll certainly weaken it. So when you're uh, depending your uh, life on it, or you're in a situation whereby you don't want it to break, that's you need something solid to be able to hook it to. And uh, last week I put up a video of me dragging a couple of logs with it and um, you can't just hook a chain on it and drag it. <laughs> it will cut the cord. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that while you're using this cord for its maximum strength you want to be covered with some, some sort of a device that's rounded. Like I say, a chain hook isn't, isn't the way to go. In any case, um, I took the nifty lift apart last week, and um, like I say, I wasn't overly impressed with the video. So I wanted to do it again against a background that hopefully you'll be able to see all the parts and see how they fit together. And one of the best things about it is with the aluminum, uh, blocks you can you can torque this quite tight and obviously I did that hmm. so everything's put together with hex keys although I am looking into uh, checking with some nut and bolt companies to see if I can find them in Torx because Torx and hex keys uh, to me Torx are just a little bit more powerful than a hex key but they shouldn't get that, they shouldn't get over torqued and they're stainless so they shouldn't rust. Like I say, you've got two, two hex keys on the end. You got one in the middle. should set up music here or figure out how to put music on the video but in any case I'll whistle um, so you've got a spacer and your bearings and other than that you're into solid aluminum so Appear to be missing a spacer. Oh, there it is. There's three spacers, two bearings, two pieces of aluminum, 
two of one size and one of another. And this little uh, slippery piece of plastic, which is called Delrin, which is very tough, actually. Um, and that's it. The tolerances are very close. And we've got grooves made in the aluminum so that uh, the only place that line has to go is around that bearing. And the bearings are off the shelf. Um, actually, it turns out that roller bearings or ball bearings, um, there's two styles. One is that I can buy is stainless, but it doesn't have as good a seal around here. And this style, which is not stainless, but it has a much better seal. And quite honestly, I went for the better seal because these are off the shelf bearings so that they're easily replaceable at some point in time if you needed to. So, the spacer. Oh, I suppose I ought to set it up this way. What I do is I take the bolt and put it in like that and then use that as a stand. Put my spacer on. And I hope I'm in the video picture here. The bearing. Another spacer. Another bearing. And the last spacer. That keeps the bearings working on the spacers rather than against each other or the outside of the, the frame. The guide. And then, I usually pick it up, do this, do this, and I like to put the lanyard on here, and if I'm going to do it, sometimes I'll even go so far as to um, thread it on uh, with the line. Now, it takes a little bit more time to do it because you've got to make sure you've got the right lines going on the bottom pulley or bearing if you will and your, your uh, piece of Delrin and then one for the top pulley now if I can get this all sandwiched together properly we'll be in good shape do, 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 do. And you just slide it up to the top piece. And if you don't get it, you can always go back and redo from ground zero, basically untie the cord, which is what's screwing me up right now. Um, but you can retie the cord and redo it that way. Or you can sometimes get it to work. This is why I put the screw in from the bottom, because this aligns everybody. But sometimes you get on video and you have to do things that you don't normally do. Or the way that you would normally do it. And sometimes you're going to line them up a little bit. And that should do it. And being using smart mechanical thought, you don't go and cross thread things if you can avoid it. And it looks like I'm not going to avoid it, so rather than do it and force it, which is never a good idea, if I can get that other shim to realign, no, not going to work. So, what I'm going to do, take it apart. Again, like I say, it's really a simple assembly. Spacer, bearing, spacer, bearing. Spacer, piece 
Delrin. All sandwiches together. And cap screws. And what I'll do is I'll put this on pause and I'll be back to you and we'll uh, we'll finish up here.